Hi, I'm Damari Gure. You're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. I'm Altaman Freddy Wattler. And I'm Ricardo Baby Gardner. And you are watching the Reggae Boys Commentary. Reggae Boys Commentary, live and direct every time. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts, 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing nutritious and delicious. There are numerous flavors to choose from. There is strawberry sea moss, peanut hard-on, beaten thing, pineapple sea moss, mango sea moss, pineapple ginger, ginger root, cucumber ginger, and so much more. Call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Call now and you won't be disappointed. If you think the juices were good, then try Starboys Jello, full of flavor and sumptuous. Again, call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Hello everybody, I'm Simon Preston. Welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. This is the platform where we come together to discuss Jamaican football. This is your hub for everything Jamaican football related. How is everybody doing? I hope you all are doing well. Well, let us know how you all are doing. Looking forward to hearing from you guys so that we can be able to continue this discussion and progress further on with things. All right. Good. So let's go right ahead, shall we? And discuss this the title of this video. Okay. But first we need to talk that the World Cup qualifiers has started. I repeat, the World Cup qualifiers has started in the CONCACAF region. Tyrone Williams says, Up, Simon, up. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Yes, in CONCACAF, I'm letting everybody be aware that World Cup qualifiers has started. We started out with 32 teams, and we're down to just 30. And by the end of the second round, we'll be down to just 12 teams. That gives you a bit of context into everything in relation to what lies ahead. 
All right, we started out with 32, and on Tuesday, we're able to cut it down some more, and now we're down to 30 teams. We're going to break down those results, and then after we break down those results, then we're going to discuss the impact that this has on Jamaica as well. All right, everybody? Good. So now that we have that all said and sorted, let's go right into this video and the, the topics. But first, a couple of the comments. Yeah, it's seven six stream. Kevin Face he says, "What's up, Simon?" Chorus Cornif says, "Up, Simon as well. How are you? Hope you are doing well." All right, good. So now that we have that sorted, let's look at this. In round one of the World Cup qualifiers, we had Anguilla taking on the, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and Anguilla got the better of the Turks and Caicos Islands on penalties, four three. It was nil nil in the first leg, one one in the second leg. No away goal rules. It went to extra time and. Penalties and Anguilla won on penalties in sudden death penalties. So it's beyond five kicks each. Now, the game that impacts Jamaica is the US Virgin Islands against the British Virgin Islands. Yes, Joaquin Boza Guzman World Cup qualification starts before the Copa America. Jamaica's first two World Cup qualifiers are June 6 and June 9. Jermaine Roberts, how are you doing, sir? I hope you are doing well. Good. So now that we have that set and sorted, the British Virgin Islands defeated the US Virgin Islands 4 2 on penalties after a 1 1 scoreline in regular and extra time. All right. So it's going to be the British Virgin Islands that got, that joins Jamaica in Group E. All right. They join Jamaica in Group E. Okay. Good. So now that we have that sorted, we can go into the second round of things now. Jamaica has only played the British Virgin Islands once, and that was in 1994. And Jamaica won that game by 12 goals to nil. Now to the second round we go, where we have 30 teams. All right, 30 teams. All right, 30, key, 30 teams. Jermaine Roberts, Figo, Figo. Let's see, let's see. So we have 30 teams in round two, and we're going to uh, dissect it. How much are in the Caribbean and how much are in Central America, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, so I have 24 teams in the Caribbean and six teams in Central America. All right, so that is the breakdown right now. Tennessee Lewis, how are you doing, sir? I hope you're doing well. So that is what is left in World Cup qualifying. 24 teams from the Caribbean and six teams from Central America. We're going to get to Jamaica's group soon, but first let, let me tell you what Group A looks like. Honduras, Antigua and Barbuda, Cuba, Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. I know Antigua and Barbuda is seated second in this group. You know, Cuba did fairly well when it came to the Nations League recently and even got a victory under their belt as well at home. As many people remember, they, they drew nil-nil with, with Honduras in the Nations League, nil-nil in Santo Domingo, and they defeated Suriname by a goal to nil. And they also had a nil-nil away draw against Haiti. So Cuba or Antigua and Barbuda could get a spot there. Bermuda, it's been some time. You know, Bermuda has gotten positive results in the past. They defeated Panama. we we'll go back to 2019 Nations League thereabouts. But certainly a group that I think Honduras should top. But let's see how everything plays out. Group B is an interesting group. I think it's an evenly balanced group with Costa Rica, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada and Bahamas. I would say four of those five teams in the group can think that they have a genuine opportunity to be able to advance into the third and final round of the qualifiers. You know what I'm saying? So you think about Grenada, they also they have a diaspora within the United Kingdom and can call upon players that play in League 2, League 1 and some of them in the National League, the fifth tier as well. We know Trinidad and Tobago continues their rise as well. St. Kitts and Nevis also, with a few teams under their belt as well. So, that's what I would say. Bahamas. I know they had that nil-nil draw against Trinidad and Tobago, but it is a tough ask to put them in a situation where top two, finishing top two. Group C, Haiti, Curacao, St. Lucia, Barbados, and Aruba. I'll see a few teams in this group. Haiti and Curacao should, should make progress. St. Lucia would be in a Barcelona in net. Can 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 hamper things, but we shall see. 
Group D, Panama, Nicaragua, Guyana, Montserrat, and Belize. Yeah, Guyana will be fighting to get into that those top two positions. So that should be an enthralling battle as well. Montserrat, they also have some gems as well that apply their trade in the United Kingdom. So we can look out further for them as well. We're going to touch on Jamaica's Group E, but before that, El Salvador, Suriname, Puerto Rico, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Anguilla. Anguilla in the second round of the qualifiers for the first time in their history. SVG, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you have Puerto Rico, Suriname, and El Salvador. It'll be compelling to see the recruitment that comes through Suriname as well in terms of challenging for the top two positions. And finally, Group E, the one that we all are here for, the one that we're all going to discuss. Kevin Bailey, I see your comment, and I will address it quite shortly. And also Figa Figa's comment. So we can be able to touch on that as well. So Group E, Jamaica. Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, Dominica, and the British Virgin Islands. All right. So that is Jamaica's group for the World Cup qualifiers. Now remember, guys, after finishing the top two in order to advance to the third round, which in a sense is the final round of World Cup qualifiers. Remember, the format for World Cup qualifying has changed, all right? You have this second round, and after the second round, you have the third round. And in the third round, you have three groups and four teams in each group. Three groups and four teams in each group. The group winner of each of the three groups will qualify for the World Cup, while the two best runners-up will qualify for the Intercontinental Playoffs. So that is where we are. That is where we are, folks. All right. So we are aware of the situation. We are aware and we know exactly what is needed, the requirements and all of that. Okay, good. So we press on forward now so that we can be able to continue on this trajectory. All right, good. All righty, let's get to Jamaica's group, Group E. Jamaica, Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, Dominica, and the British Virgin Islands. Jamaica will play Dominica and the British Virgin Islands away, and Jamaica will play the Dominican Republic and Guatemala at home. Jamaica will open the campaign on June 6, 2024, against the Dominican Republic at home. Jamaica will play two World Cup qualifiers in June 2024 and two World Cup qualifiers in June 2025. Jamaica will play the British Virgin Islands and Guatemala in June of 2025. Okay, June 2025. Yes, Mr. Guzman, Jamaica's first home game will be on June 6. 2024 against the Dominican Republic. All right, June 6, 2024 against the Dominican Republic. June 6, 2024 against the Dominican Republic. And three days later on June 9, Jamaica will face Dominica away. All right, Dominica away. Okay, everybody get that drift? Certainly hope that you guys understand that. And understand what I've just said. Okay. Yeah, because this is very important. Very important for us to process. And if anybody has any questions in relation to what I explained, let me know. Because Jamaica will play Guatemala and the Dominican Republic at home. And Jamaica will play Dominica and the British Virgin Islands away. In this round, in this round, it is not home and away. In the third round, which is the final round, it is going to be home and away. Okay? All right. It's the third round when we can discuss about home and away. In the second round, it's two home. 
and two away. All right. Good. All righty. Now let us look at you know, some of the questions that you guys are saying. So yes, Mr. Guzman, I just explained that part to you. Now, I know you guys see the title of this video. 70 days to go until the World Cup qualifies. Let us fill the national stadium. So we are 10 weeks to go. We're 10 weeks to go until we face the Dominican Republic in our first game of the World Cup qualifiers. 10 weeks to go. 7 times 10 is 70. So we are 70 days to go. 70 days to go. Matthew Dono, I don't know if you are new on this platform, but firstly, you have to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And secondly, we do not discuss speculation on this platform. This platform is accuracy, reliability, credibility, and positivity. We do not discuss speculation on this platform. So if Simon Preston has not said something, then that means Anasoiko. It's as simple and as straightforward as that. So we can go right into what we're discussing right now. Good. We are 10 weeks to go. 10 weeks to go until we face the Dominican Republic. It is our responsibility to ensure that we can get a sea of black, green, and gold in the national stadium. How can we be able to accomplish this? Well, there's a number of things. Results. Results also play an important role because if the team is doing well and if they're a success, then the demand will certainly be there to come out in the numbers. Two, personnel. If persons are, once persons are aware of squads, are aware of the caliber of players on store, then certainly that will also entice others to say, I want to see that superstar and I want to see that superstar represent Jamaica or I want to see that player represent Jamaica. So it ties hand in hand when you put all of these things into fruition because these are important components. I do think Jamaica has changed over recent times because I can tell you as a fact, the last time that the national stadium was filled for a World Cup qualifier would have to be March 2013 against Panama at home. That was the last time the National Stadium was full to the brim. Of course, we had World Cup qualifiers against the United States and Mexico in June of that year. But I wouldn't say it was the same intensity like it was against Panama. As we know, this was the match immediately after that historic 0-0 draw against Mexico at the Azteca Stadium. So that in itself shows what a positive result can do. All right? Now we go to the 2018 World Cup qualifying campaign. We had Nicaragua at home. We And then we had, in the second round of qualifiers, we had Costa Rica, Panama, and Haiti. All right? In the 2022 cycle now, remember, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the only games where there was fans was the United States game, which had a limited capacity, and... The El Salvador and Honduras games, which also had a limited capacity as well. So three out of our seven home games in the last set of World Cup qualifiers, the 12th man could come out. Matches against Canada, Mexico, Costa Rica, and Panama. No fans were permitted into the national stadium. But now we have a glorious opportunity. A glorious opportunity for the first time in 11 years to refill the national stadium. A great opportunity to be able to do that. Detonation, Nation, how are you doing, sir? Hope you're doing well. MPEG TV says, greetings, Simon, and viewers. So we're 10 weeks to go. There's ample time now. So think about this. 10 weeks from now, you guys know it's going to be a Thursday, right? So you can plan in your brain right now, OK, it's a Thursday. Jamaica is going to play at home on a Thursday. What arrangements can I make? You ask yourself, okay, I work a nine to five job. Can I make any arrangements that I could leave 4.30? Or, all right, I work a nine to five job. The moment my shift finishes at five o'clock, can I find my way to the national stadium? Because that is the place where you need to be. If we're gonna make 2026 a reality, all stakeholders have a role to play in this process. Every single person has a role to play in this process. 
So that is very important. Yes, you're right, Chorus Kornif. There were a lot of spectators in the in the stands for champs, and certainly we've seen that consistently. Only 2021, where champs had no fans, was the last time champs didn't have spectatorship there. I mean, the largest attendance we've had for a reggae boys game in recent times, we have to go to the Gold Cup match of 2019 against Honduras, where it was 17,000. 17,000 fans were in the National Stadium as the Reggae Boys took on Honduras in a 3-2 victory with a brace from Deva Orgil and a headed goal from Damien Lowe. Tycoon, there are sponsors on board. There are sponsors and there certainly will be more to come for sure, especially in a busy calendar year that we have. So, yeah, there are sponsors, absolutely. Well, these, you have to know the importance of what I've just said. Everybody, every single one of us is aware of the date, time, date, and date of matches, even heading into 2025. We know when we're going to play Guatemala in 2025. We know when we're going to play the Dominican Republic in 2024. That is prepared. And like, as you can see in the title of this video, 70 days to go. So there's ample notice for everybody to be fully aware. Everybody is aware of this. This is not news. No, this is not something that just came out of the blue. We are aware all the way up until November 2025, the FIFA dates. No course, Corneef. Our victory against Honduras in the 2019 edition of the CONCACAF Gold Cup came in the National Stadium. All right? Kevin Facey, like I said, it's a combination of everything. All stakeholders have to be involved. Results are an important factor. And also, quality players. And we have we saw quality players in Dallas, didn't we? So we shouldn't have any doubt at all. That's right. Everybody needs to be thinking the same way Mr. Guzman is thinking. The same, 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 same way. So, okay, 10 weeks to go until the World Cup qualifiers. Do you know, did you know that if you save 500 Jamaican dollars a week between now and June 6th, think about it. If you save 500 Jamaican dollars a week, then you can be able to purchase a grandstand ticket assuming it's five hundred five thousand dollars. So let's say the ticket for Grandstand is five thousand dollars. If you save five hundred dollars a week, then you get your five thousand dollars. If you save a thousand dollars a week, then you get it with five weeks to spare. Do you understand what I'm saying? And think about this: we're ten weeks to go, right? If you save one hundred and fifty Jamaican dollars a week, assuming bleachers is fifteen hundred, then you can buy it. I'm not sure what the ticket prices will be like, but let's just say bleaches is 1500 and let's say Grandstand is 5000 It's doable. It's possible. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a role to play here. Every single one of us. You understand what I'm saying? You get the drift of what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, this is important. How do you all feel about that?
That's what I'll say. Well, Kimar Williams, the latest CONCACAF rankings index is not out as yet. But in terms of where we are right, right now as we speak, in terms of right, 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 right now, based on the the latest index of the CONCACAF FIFA anchorage, because remember, this is something that is updated on a regular basis. As of February 29, 2024, Jamaica is sixth in the index, number six in the CONCACAF rankings index. But that's at the end of February. We'll see what the March edition is like. Bada Bling said, blessed Simon, blessed. <laughs> figo, figo. <laughs> uh, all right. You say good night when you're going to bed, when it's the last time you're going to talk to somebody. You say good evening to somebody when you see them for the first time after 6 p.m. So you ask the question, would that match be evening or night? I think you mean, would the match be afternoon or evening? The kickoff time is is not net, not as yet public. Bada Blinks is just checking in. All right. Devil Forces, I'll be down for matches. Bags already packed. Wow. Look at that. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Really, really good to see. That's really nice. Yeah. Arrange a round trip with Nuxford. For spectators? Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting idea, Father Bling. I never thought about that before. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's something worth considering. But <laughs> well, it's not a but. But what you find is that you have like supporters groups that put together. And then from there, you have a scenario where there's transportation arranged to take somebody to a destination. Perhaps somebody gets an Airbnb as well. I would say AQ is a good person to speak to about this, but it's an interesting thought process on things, you know? You know? That's very interesting, honestly. Honestly, very interesting. Didn't think about it like that. Lee, promotions, there is one aspect in terms of ticket give giveaway or ticket giveaway or trivia. But remember, you want to, you're going to have in excess of 35,000, 30,000 people. So giving away 100 tickets is a small dent in that. A very small dent in that. You see what I'm saying? No, Mark, I, I disagree. I'm not sure if you've been watching since 2016, but on this platform, it's always been about accuracy, reliability, credibility, and positivity. It's always been of that nature. I think it's important that you watch more of the content on this channel to see exactly what this channel is about and how different it is 
from what you may be observing online. So, yeah. Part of Link says, not everybody knows Kingston like that, and some people don't feel comfortable driving that far. Well, Montego Bay to Kingston, as you know, it's it's a smooth road. You're talking about the highway that takes you into Kingston. You end up on the boulevard. On the boulevard now, you end up in Constant Spring. And then you go straight to the National Stadium now. You find yourself on Constant Spring Road. And then you end up in New Kingston. And then a couple more turns. And you find yourself at the National Stadium. Damon Former Greco says, good evening. Good evening. How are you? All is well? How is everybody doing? All as well. Yep, let us know how you all are doing. Tell us. Okay, Marco, I understand what you are saying, but there are certain things that you have said that are inaccurate. So, and I answer the question saying no. It's important to be professional at all times, and I'm never going to change that. I'm never going to stop being professional. Never. I said the time of the game is not public knowledge. That doesn't mean that I know the time of the game. That is why it's it's important that you don't assume and you, and you meditate. Because something is not public knowledge doesn't mean that I know. Just because I said that something is not public knowledge does not mean that a time has been confirmed. We're in the middle of March. Times of kickoff matches are not decided 10 weeks before a game. For CONCACAF Nations League and World Cup qualifiers. And that is not something that is hidden. CONCACAF, even on their website, hosts times of games. So again... I will say, instead of assuming, think before we speak. It depends the time of the day, Tevin. It really depends the time of the day that you traverse. The time of the day is very important when you consider all of this in, in, in aspect. So when you process all of those aspects, like, you know, 4, 4.35, you're talking about congestion. People are finishing work. People are heading home, heading in home. So it, it depends, Tevin, on the time of day as well. So you have those to consider. Gordon Dain Vinamin. Gordon Dain Vinamin. Tala Swa Islensku. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you, Algrima. Hope you and the family are okay. And hope that you enjoyed your time in Dallas. So nice to, to, to see you. <laughs> Very nice to see you. Okay. So, as I was making mention, guys, for. For Group E, for round, for Group E of the World Cup qualifiers, the fixture list. This is how it's going to pan out for June. So you're going to have each team playing two games by the end of by June 11, 2024. All right. So our group starts on June 5th. When Guatemala hosts Dominica. And then the next, the next day it's going to be Jamaica 
against the Dominican Republic. On the weekend now, you have the British Virgin Islands hosting Guatemala, and you have Dominica tackling Jamaica. A few days after that, it's the Dominican Republic hosting the British Virgin Islands. All right? Good. And what's going to happen here, right, is an interesting scenario because you're going to have a situation where you have either Guatemala or the Dominican Republic drop in points. And the next day, Jamaica takes on the British Virgin Islands. So Jamaica knows a victory here, and they're guaranteed that one of these two teams or both teams will be dropping points in the Guatemala-Dominican Republic encounter. And on June 10, the Dominican Republic against Dominica and Jamaica against Guatemala. Yeah, that's true. Nitro Town Cryo is an interesting one, but again, remember, we're looking to bring 35,000 35, people into the national stadium, and we have 10 weeks to do so. So consistency in reminding people is one, and consistently pulling and giving information. So even persons who prepare content online have a responsibility as well. Date of games, time location that is an important aspect of it as well so that is another aspect that people cannot forget or cannot go around you understand yeah Tevin, i didn't doubt i didn't doubt that you know kingston never doubted that you know kingston <laughs> yeah yeah so you get the drift man you get the drift 100 percent I believe so. Art as magic. We have a great team. We're 10 matches away from the World Cup. We are 10 matches away. Because think about it. Four matches in the second round. Six matches in the third round. So that is 10 matches. 10 matches in World Cup qualifiers. So we're 10 matches away from the World Cup. That's even less, that's even less than the number of games we played in the 2022 World Cup qualifying cycle at 14 matches. And now we're playing 10 World Cup qualifiers. You understand what I'm saying? 10 World Cup qualifiers. 10. So we're even closer. 10 matches. Four in the second round, six in the third round. By the time we get to Copa America, we'll have eight matches left. Well, two matches in the second round. And let me make this abundantly clear. It's non-negotiable. We need six points before we go to the Copa America. It's non-negotiable. Negotiable. We need six points. Six points before we head to the Copa America. Before we go to the Copa America tournament, we need six points. Before we arrive in Houston, Texas, to face the to face Mexico. In the Copa America, we need six points in World Cup qualifying. We need to be going into the Copa America with the with the with the assurance in the back of our brain that we've picked up maximum points from our first two games in World Cup qualifying. We don't want any lingering doubt or lingering anxiety for twelve months because our next two games in World Cup qualifying. It will be June 2025. So that is why it's incredibly important to pick up six points in, in June 2024 and six points in June of 2025. Yeah, that's an interesting one, Nitro. Yeah, that's important as well. Yeah, good point. Very good point. 
Much appreciated, Christopher Carroll. Really appreciated. Jason Guna, how are you doing, man? Oh, man, Jason, you, you tuned in 40 minutes late. Yeah, you're going to have to rewind to, to catch up on, on some stuff, man. <laughs> I hope you're going to do good, Jason. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Nitro, in terms of the collaboration element. That's an interesting one. An interesting one. Tevin Campbell, as I already mentioned a few days ago, you're not allowed to have a halftime performance on match day. You're not allowed to do that. You can't do that at halftime, no. But under IG, I guess you're referring to the build-up. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Well, first thing, if you're talking about art, an artist who is going to big up the game or to at least bring some awareness to it, the first thing is the agent. The agent of the recording artist, the agent has to agree to it, and the agent has to tell the recording artist that this is needed. So it's a collaboration aspect here. I understand what you're saying, Alex. For me, the priority is to get six points in World Cup qualifying. And then, of course, you have a very, very short break before the Copa America. I understand what you're saying. But I think it's also important that we leave Dominica knowing that we have six points on the board. So that we can go into the Copa America and our focus and our attention is different, where it's now us playing in the second biggest international football competition on the planet, where now eyes are on us in a different light. So, hope you understand what I'm saying there. You get me? Yeah, we need a good start, Alex. We need a good start. So, six points in June 2024, six points in June 2025. That is extremely critical, extremely important for us. We need it. We really need it. That's important. So, yeah. That is that. That is the important aspect. Yes, Leah, I've done a video on the Dominican Republic not too long ago, but I've seen some comments, maybe just like what I did about the British Virgin Islands. I should do one video on the Dominican Republic, one video on Dominica, one video on Guatemala. So that is what I'm considering. But yes, the Dominican Republic is a team that is continuing to improve in CONCACAF. We know what's been happening in terms of the women's side and the progress they're making there. On the men's side of things, they qualified for the Under-20 World Cup and the Dominican Republic will be at the Olympics this summer as well. So it's an interesting plate of football that they have right now. Yeah, so their, their head coach is Marcelo Nevelev from Argentina. The Dominican Republic right now, they're ranked 150th within the world. They had two friendlies recently. They 
defeated Aruba by two goals to nil. And they fell 4-1 to Peru. The Dominican Republic have players that play their trade domestically, because like Cebao, Atletico Pantoja in the Dominican Republic, and also players who play their trade in North America, like Xavier Valdez at Houston Dynamo. Players in South America, like a lot play in Bolivia right now. And a few that play in Spain, fifth tier as well. And one in the USL in Ricky Alba. And one that I know a lot of Jamaicans would be fully aware of is a young man that plays in England, and that is Leeds United. And that's 27-year-old Junior Ferpo, born in the Dominican Republic, played for Real Betis and spent some time as well at Barcelona. Now in his third season at Leeds United. Jello T, how are you doing, man? Final, MPEG TV says, final round will be tough. We will draw a group winner in our group. Yes, that is true. That is true. We'll see what the third round looks like in terms of the setup. But first, let's take care of business in the second round. Yeah. Yep, I just spoke about that nature, for sure. So, big games ahead. And we're looking forward to it. Are you guys ready? Okay. Dominica, so that you all are aware. I haven't played them in a long time. Dominica, head coach is Ellington Sabin. Born in Dominica. Captain is Glenson Prince, who plays for domestically at the Blanc Football Club. Play at Windsor Park, which is known for a lot for cricket. They have players who play their trade in Dominica and also some that play non league football as well in England. You know, I'd say one of their heroes is Julian Wade. Julian Wade, right now, he plays. In Scotland, in the Highland League. And the Highland League, so that you're aware, is the fifth tier of Scottish football. All right. It's quite a journey because he played for Dominica at youth level, then Montserrat, and then switched over to Dominica. Audio Lovell is another interesting player. One of their players from the past is Richard Puckett. Richard Puckett, formerly of Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, an extensive career in non-league football. You know, many people forget, but he's still even playing right now. Amasham Town, right now. As he plays in the, the ninth tier of English football. That's a little bit about Dominico. Scored on his debut in that... 1-1 one, one draw against Barbados in 2008. Six-footer, works hard, and certainly a, a key player. You're right, Mr. Guzman, it's not easy matches at all. Every match will have to bring 150%. Looking good, Jello. Now it's time for us to press on and get to the World Cup. Interesting, Christopher Carroll. 
Hmm. Well, once that information is put together, then we push it out. All right. That's an interesting one. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. In terms of the other opposition, no. The British Virgin Islands. The British Virgin Islands, they play and they have players who are in England, play non-league football. They have players who play non-league football. You know, and some will play as well within the, the other leagues as well. In the British Virgin Islands League. So, yeah. So that's where we are right now. Guatemala. I mean, everybody knows Jamaica matches against Guatemala. I produced some wonderful moments for Jamaica. Think about the Gold Cup. You think about not only the last Gold Cup, but 2011 Gold Cup. You think about 2003 Gold Cup, 2011 Gold Cup. There have been some memories, early and good memories. Guatemala, Nicholas Hagen, between the sticks, a key component for them. A squad that largely plays their trade in, in Guatemala. Players who play for Comunicaciones, Municipal, Antigua. Largely domestic-based squad with players who play their trade in MLS, in the USL, and also in the major arena soccer league. That just gives you an idea of the diversity of the squad. Nathaniel Mendez Ling, as you all know, 31 years old, plays with Derby County in League One. Has proven to be important for his team. An interesting story for Mendez Ling. Born in Birmingham to a Jamaican father and a mother from Belize of Guatemalan descent. So that's his story, Mendes Ling. I'm sure many of you would remember the days of Carlos Ruiz and Freddy, Freddy Thompson, Estrada, Juan Carlos Plata, it's been a long time representing Guatemala. Freddy Garcia as well. Dwight Pesarossi. In recent times, one player that truly, you know, when he made his move to, to Europe, caught some people, and that was Marco Papa. Marco Papa is 36 now. Played in the Dutch League, played in the MLS. Represented Guatemala for 11 years. Yeah, was well, an important force for them. Yes, sir. That is correct. Just mention it. Hmm. So that is that. Thank you very much, Reggae Boys fans, for tuning in. I appreciate your support. Please, I encourage you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, so we can continue the growth of this platform. All right, guys? Thank you all so much for your support. And we will be in touch. More videos to come. 
more videos coming your way. All right, stay tuned for so much more. Hi, I'm Damari Gurit. You're watching Reggae Boys Commentary. I'm Altaman Freddy Wattler. And I'm Ricardo Baby Gardner. And you are watching the Reggae Boys Commentary. Reggae Boys Commentary, live and direct every. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. This video is brought to you by Starboy's Juices. Infusing fruits with sea moss in Philadelphia and New Jersey. Refreshing, nutritious, and delicious. There are numerous flavors to choose from. There is strawberry sea moss, peanut hard on, beet and thing, pineapple sea moss, mango sea moss, pineapple ginger, ginger root, cucumber ginger, and so much more. Call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. That's 1-267-904-3454. Call now and you won't be disappointed. If you think the juices were good, then try Starboys Jello, full of flavor and sumptuous. Again, call Starboys at 1-267-904-3454. Three four five four. That's one two six seven nine zero four three four five four. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sport City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sports City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sports City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sports City right now. Hi, my name is Lee Williamson. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi, my name is Joby McEnough. Subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary. Hi everybody, I'm Darren Moore and you're watching Reggae Boys Commentary.